Hello everyone. The title of this video is section 2.7 part 2. It's on solving absolute value inequalities. So in this video I'm going to be taking you through the Newton-Alta assignment for section 2.7 part 2. Uh, just be aware that the questions I am seeing when I'm working on the assignment aren't going to necessarily be the exact same questions that you'll see when you work on the assignment. But the objectives will be the same and the way I would work on the questions, the way I would solve them, will be the same as the way you should solve them. Okay. So let's, uh, let's get into it. So, you know, you're not going to see the word preview. You're not going to see, right, the instructor cheat button. But you'll see just the title of the section, right, the mastery bar, the objectives. There are two objectives in this section. You know, solve an absolute value inequality involving, you know, less than or is less than or is less than or equal to and solve an absolute value inequality involving greater than, right, is greater than, is greater than or equal to. And it looks like that's what this first question is about. Right. Uh, you also have the more instruction button that you will see, and you can click on that and it'll take you to some reading or some videos that'll help you with the question, you know, the objective that you're currently working on. Alright, so in this first question, we have solve an absolute value inequality involving greater than. All right, so I'm going to write this out, and then I'll talk about you know the procedure I would go through to solve such an inequality, and then actually do it for this problem. <coughs> All right. So here I have an absolute value inequality involving you know is greater than or is greater than or equal to. So here's the procedure I would go through to solve such an inequality. First I want to get the inequality in this form. Absolute value of something on one side, you know, and the le I'll take it to the left. <clears throat> so get the absolute value expression alone, which is not happening here. See I have the absolute value expression, but it's not alone, right? I got the plus seven. So I want to get rid of that. I'll do that later. And then is greater than or is greater than or equal to and then some number a on the other side. Now, the only way this is going to be really interesting is if this number a is non-negative. I'll show you what happens when this number is negative in a second. All right, and think about what this means. You know, remember absolute value is distance from zero on the number line. So say here's a number line, here's the number zero, and we're looking for numbers, we're looking for numbers that have an absolute value greater than a, or equal to if the equal to signs there. But numbers that have an absolute value greater than a, that means that these numbers are farther away from zero than a units. So what numbers are a units from zero? Well, there would be a and the opposite of a, right? These numbers are a units from zero. So the numbers we're concerned with are the numbers with an absolute value greater than a, right? The numbers to the right of a, right, they're farther than a units from zero, or the numbers to the left of negative a, right? So u, right, whatever numbers this u is, can be one of these numbers or one of these numbers. So that's part two, right? after isolating the absolute value, after getting the absolute value of something is greater than a non-negative number, right, one, two, three, five, whatever, some non-negative number over here, then I write an equivalent compound inequality, 
right, this this statement I have here is equivalent to <coughs> the following compound inequality, the following or compound inequality. So in order for this state to, in order for this first statement to be true, either u is less right less than negative a, right, the opposite of a, or u is greater than a. And again, if the if the or equal to symbol is in there, right, if I have the or equal to symbol, that's going to show up in all these. All right, so I'll put that in a different color. And then you solve the resulting compound inequality, right? I guess I'll call this the third step. Right? Solve the resulting compound inequality, this or inequality. All right, and of course, check. All right? Test test your solutions at the end. All right. I'll say, uh, you know, test solutions at the end, check solutions. The only problem with the word check is that, uh, you know, that typically there will be infinitely many solutions. So you can't check them all. So that's why I'm saying let's, let's just test some of them. See that they work out back in the original. Again, always go back to the original uh, inequality. Test solutions in the original inequality. Okay, so this these are the steps I'm going to take for every single one of these uh, absolute value inequalities. Now, this is only if the number on the other side is not negative, you know, after I get the absolute value alone. So, you'll see in this example what happens when the number is negative. Watch this. So first I would like to, and that first step is to get the absolute value expression alone, right? Get this alone. And I like to do it on the left side, right? So this absolute value of x minus 6, I want to get that alone. In order to do that, I'd have to subtract 7 from both sides, right? So minus 7, minus 7. So now on the left side, I have the absolute value of x minus 6 is greater than or equal to a negative number, right, negative 8. And that's not what I was describing over here. Right? If you have a negative number on the other side, right, if you have a negative number on the other side, then the statement will always be true. Because think about this. right? The absolute value, right, this left side, is not negative, right? Non-negative. And something that is not negative will always be greater than or equal to something that's negative. Right? If you think about the number line, right? if you think about a number line, you know, here's a zero. You know, the negative numbers are all of these. Right, here are the negative numbers. The non-negative numbers are all of these. Right? Zero is not negative. So, yeah. And here are the non-negative numbers. And you see that every single non-negative number <laughs> is to the right of every single negative number. So this statement you know, the absolute value of something is greater than or equal to a negative. This is always true. Right, this is always true. And if it's always true, that means every real number is a solution. All right, so all real numbers. Are solutions. Right, you can plug in anything you want for x. Plug in 0, plug in 100, plug in negative 2, and the original statement will be true. And I, I'll leave it to you to test that out.
Plug in any number you want for x, and the original statement will be a true statement. So here's how you would graph that. If I want to you know, show that all real numbers are solutions, I'm just graphing everything. From the far left forever to the far right forever. There's the graph of your solution set, all real numbers. And then the interval notation, right? They want us to, exp if you read the instructions, right? They want us to express the solutions in interval notation. Sorry, that says notation. And you've probably seen this before. The interval notation for all real numbers, right? The entire real number line is, you know, from negative infinity, comma, to positive infinity. Going, you always go left to right. And there's always parentheses on those, right? And this, this is what they're asking us to enter, right? The interval notation describing the solutions. All right, so hopefully we'll come across an example where there's not a negative number on the other side. Because, <laughs> again, that'll be much more interesting. I'll have to follow these steps. But if there's a negative, if, if you have the absolute value greater than or greater than or equal to a negative, that is always going to be true. So every real number will be a solution in that case. All right, so let's go back and enter that interval, all, right, all real numbers. So in parentheses, you know, you got negative infinity, comma, to positive infinity. Close the parentheses. There's the interval notation for all real numbers. All right, wonderful. And again, after every problem, whether you get it right or wrong, uh, there should be an answer explanation. Please read through this. Okay, um, because, uh, you know, if you're right, this will, you know, just make sure you did everything correctly, that everything makes sense. If you're wrong, read through it and see if you can figure out where you went wrong. And that way, maybe the next problem will be easier for you. All right, All right so continuing on. All right, so this one is in the the other objective. Uh, solve an absolute value inequality involving less than, right? Is less than, is less than or equal to. All right, so I'm going to write this out and go over the steps for that. All right, so again, off to the side here, uh, I'm going to go into the steps that I'll follow to solve these uh, absolute value inequalities involving is less than or is less than or equal to symbols. So first I'll get in that form where I you know, get the absolute value expression alone on the left side. So here I would have to subtract 4. Right? So first I'm going to get the absolute value of something and then is less than or is less than or equal to and then some number on the other side, which I'll call a. All right now, just as just as in the greater than uh, scenario, the only way this is going to be really interesting and not easy, all right, the only way this is going to be actually a little more difficult and involve some steps, is if this number is not negative. All right. In fact, if the, only really if this number is positive, all right, will this be uh, interesting? I mean, I guess if it's zero and you have less than or equal to it, it could be interesting as well. But for for the most part, if that number is not negative, we can continue. Right? If it is negative, then I would uh, I'd worry a bit. All right. All right. I'd have to think about it a different way. All right, and then just as before, you know, think of the number line. You know, here's a zero. We're looking for numbers that have an absolute value less than a. Having an absolute value less than a means that you are closer to zero than a units or negative a. Because right? these numbers, a and the opposite of a, these are a units from zero. So all the numbers we want are between those. Right? All these numbers in between a and the opposite of a, 
have an absolute value less than a. They're closer to zero than a. Um, so, noting this picture, again, you don't have to draw this picture, but we can take our absolute value inequality and write it as an equivalent compound inequality. But this time, instead of the word or involved, the word and will be involved. And in fact, I'm not going to write the word and, I'm just going to write a nice connected inequality. You'll see. So this is statement, this statement is equivalent to u, right, u has to be between a and the opposite of a. So u has to be between, right, you see this connected inequality, it has to be greater than something and less than something at the same time between two things. And make sure that this, you know, the smaller number on the left, the larger number on the right. So then you, then you solve this compound inequality. solve this compound inequality and you know test solutions back in the original just like before right yeah. again there there will typically be infinitely many solutions so I'll just pick one or two to test and see if the original statement is actually a true statement All right. now as i said before this will also be the same if this is you know less than or equal to then this, you just put the or equal to symbol under all the inequality symbols here. But we transform this into this connected compound inequality. U is greater than or equal to the opposite of A and at the same time less than or equal to A or just between negative A and A. And then solve. And remember to solve an inequality like this, you get the variable alone in the middle. All right. Okay. And then if there is a negative number on the other side, then, then you'll have something that'll never happen. Right? The absolute value of something can never be less than a negative, so you'd have no solution in that case. So just be aware, if, there's an, if, you, if you get the absolute value alone, and then it's less than or less than or equal to a negative number, no solution. Simple as that. All right, so this first one. Uh, this next example, right? Yeah, we have the absolute value of 2x minus 1. So I want to get that alone first. Get this alone on its own side, and I like the left side myself. Right? So in order to do that, I need to take away this 4. Right? Subtract 4 from both sides. So now I have you know, the absolute value of 2x minus 1 on the left is less than or equal and then 5 minus 4 is you know, po positive 1. That, that's not negative. That's good. So now I can follow these steps. Right. So this 2x minus 1 is like the u. And this positive 1 on the other side is like the a that I wrote here. All right. So this is equivalent to saying the following compound inequality. So this is equivalent to saying that, well, if the absolute value of 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to 1, that means that 2x minus 1 has to be between and including, or right, less than or equal to, negative 1 and positive 1. Right? That's the a and opposite of a. So I take an absolute value inequality, you know, write it as an inequality without absolute values, but it's a compound inequality. Right. And then I solve for the variable. Now again, you're doing this to all, you know, whatever you do to the middle, you do to all three parts. And just remember that if you ever multiply or divide by negatives, it flips the direction of the inequalities. Right. And I want to get the variable alone in the middle. So to get x alone in the middle here, at first I would add 1 and I would add one to all three parts. Right? What I'm doing is basically solving both inequalities at the same time. Negative one plus one is zero, is less than or equal to, and then you have two x in the middle, and that's less than or equal to two. And then to get x alone in the middle, a single x, you divide by two, right? And I'd be dividing both sides of this inequality by two, and both sides of that inequality by two. And that's a positive 2, right? So the inequalities stay the direction they're in. And I have 0 is less than or equal to x. And that's also less than or equal to 1. Right, and here is a description of the solutions of this inequality. 
<clears throat> this is telling me I could replace x with any number between 0 and 1, including 0 and including 1. And go ahead and test it out. Replace x with a half and see that the original statement is true. Replace x with 3 quarters and see that the original statement is true. Replace x with 0, replace x with 1, and it should be true as well. Any other number, right, any other, any number bigger than 1 or less than 0 won't work. We'll make the original statement false. All right, now for a graph, you don't have to make a graph, but I'm, I'm going to. So you have 0 here, 1 there, and you know, our solutions are all the values between 0 and 1 including 0 because you got the or equal to and including 1 because you got the or equal to so you know, a closed point a filled in point above 0 and above 1 or a bracket but there's a picture of all the solutions of this inequality and then the interval you know always left to right here you know this goes from left to right from 0 to 1 so I got 0 comma 1 0 is a solution right? so rectangular bracket on that and 1 is also a solution right? so bracket on that and this is what they're asking us for, right? The interval notation for the, the, the solution set of the inequality. And once again, I leave it to you because there's infinitely many numbers in here. Test the solutions out. You know, take any number from 0 to 1 that you want, plug it into the x up here, and see that the original statement is a true statement. And it should be if you're doing everything right. Okay, so back here, I'm going to enter that interval. All right, we had the bracket. 0, comma, 1, and then a right bracket. All right, the brackets on both ends. And submit. And wonderful. All right, and again, please read through the answer explanations. Right. Okay. Next question. So now I've done one of each, right? I've done one with the less thans, one with the greater thans. Um, so now I know the procedure I'm going to go through for each of them. So you just got to pay attention to wh which one you're in, right? Am I in the less than or greater than objective? So this one's, you know, solve an absolute value inequality involving the greater than. All right, now this one's real simple, right? Nothing to really do. You know, it's already set up the way I want to start. All right, so let me pause this. I'll write it down, bring on some paper. All right, and uh, this, you know, it's already the way I want, right? Remember, this is how I would solve from earlier. My first example, how I would solve the you know, greater than case, get the absolute value expression alone, which it already is, is greater than or greater than or equal to, and then some non-negative number, which I have here, right? This is not negative. This is a you know, positive 6. So now I can follow these steps, right? If it, Remember, if this was negative, then you just have to, you know, think, hey, you know, you, it, it, this is this would have all real numbers as solutions. The absolute value of something is always greater than a negative, so all real numbers would be solutions. All right, but this is not negative, so I can continue on. Right, this is equivalent to the following statement. So here, the x is like the u, and the six is the a. And the only way that a value has an absolute value greater than six is if that value is less than negative 6, right? So either x is less than negative 6, right? Because those values, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, and so on, have an absolute value greater than 6. Or, you know, x could also be values greater than 6. All right, so in the greater than case, one of the inequalities is basically just without the absolute value symbols, right? Just that x is greater than 6, or... And then the other inequality is you get rid of the absolute value symbols and, you know, switch the symbol and make the other side negative. All right, and you end up with the same equivalence. And this is already solved for, right? I'm already, you know, x is already alone in both of these inequalities. And if I were to graph this, right, we got negative 6 mentioned, positive 6 mentioned. And all the solutions are, you know, the number is less than negative 6 but not negative 6 itself, right? So I have an empty point or a parentheses above that. Or all the numbers greater than 6, right? To the right of 6, but not 6 itself, right? So another empty point or parentheses above that. And there's a picture of all the solutions. And again, I leave it to you. You can test these out. 
pick any number less than negative 6, you know, say negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, plug it in for x, and take the absolute value, it should be greater than 6. That should be true. Same thing for any number greater than 6, you know, 6.1, 7, 8, a million. Plug it in for x, and this statement should be true. And then all the other values, right, from negative 6 to 6, when you plug them in, will make it false. Right? That's why they're not in the graph. And remember for interval notation with these or inequalities and there you know see there's a gap between the pictures there's a gap between the parts of my solution set so I should be writing an interval for each of them and then connecting them with the union symbol right the symbol for or so again going left to right uh, the first piece here is you know going from negative infinity to negative six you always have parentheses on negative infinity negative 6 is not a solution of this inequality, so parentheses on that. And then to kind of represent the gap, we have the union symbol, uh, which also represents the word or. And then the second piece of the picture is going from 6 to positive infinity, and you have parentheses on 6 because it's not a solution, and always parentheses on the infinities. And here's what they're asking us for, right? the interval notation. That's what I ha that's how I want to enter my answer. All right, so going back, going back to the website, we'll enter this, you know, union interval. So the first one was you know negative infinity, comma negative six parentheses. And the union symbol for the gap where the gap is, and then parentheses six comma positive infinity. Right? And make sure you're putting these in the correct order, right? You know, they got left to right, always left to right when you're writing interval notation, low to high. Submit. Right? And hooray, hooray, hooray. Right? And again, please read through the answer explanations. All right. Next question. All right, so this question is on the uh, the less than objective. All right. So once again, I'll write this out and go to a piece of paper for you. All right, so this is the less than case. All right, so I wrote those steps up in an earlier example. Here they were. So remember, first I wanted to get the absolute value alone. Now to do that here, this absolute value of 2x plus 3, right, I want to get that alone on the left side. So I'm going to take away 4 from both sides. Right? So that gives me the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is less than, and then 5 minus 4 is, you know, po positive 1. So notice I have it in the form that I want, right? Got the absolute value of something on its own side is less than some number that's not negative, right? Positive one. One more time, you know, if this were a negative number, there'd be no solution, right? Remember, the absolute value is not negative, and something that's not negative can't be less than something that's negative, right? So if this number on the right side is negative, and you have the less than case, uh, there's no solution. But if it's not negative, then we can continue. All right, so be aware of that. All right, so now that I have what I want, right, the absolute value alone is less than some non-negative number, I can write the equivalent compound inequality, right, where again, u is the 2x plus 3, and the a is the positive 1. So the only way the absolute value of 2x plus 3 will be less than 1 is if 2x plus 3 is between negative 1 and positive 1. Right, there's the u is between a and negative a. Again, if you're setting up the inequalities like this, you know, make sure that the lower number's on the left and the higher number's on the right. All right, and then I perform the steps to solve both inequalities at the same time here by getting the variable alone in the middle. Uh, first, I would subtract 3 right, from all three parts from both sides of both inequalities here. So we got negative 4 on the left is less than 2x in the middle is less than negative 2 on the right. 
and then I would divide everything by positive 2. Right? Now dividing by positive 2 would not change the direction of the inequalities. Right? So I still have a negative 2 here is less than x is less than negative 1. And here is a description of all the solutions of this inequality. Uh, you can replace x with any number between negative 2 and negative 1 and this original statement will be true. Right? And try, try it out, test it out, replace x with like negative one and a half or negative one and two thirds or something and you know the initial statement will be true. And then a graph of this, right, say you know, make sure you're putting negative two to the left of negative one. So the, the solutions are just the numbers between negative two and negative one. So those are the only ones I'm marking. And then there's no or equal to on either of these. So negative 2 is not a solution. So I get an open point or parentheses on that. Negative 1 is also not a solution. So an open point or parentheses on that. And then the interval, right, there's only this one piece of solutions here. Going left to right, that's negative 2 to negative 1. And parentheses on either end, because again, negative 2 and negative 1 are not solutions. And there's, there's what they're asking me to enter. And again, test it out if you want. All right, I'm going to leave it to you, but replace x with any number between negative 2 and negative 1, and the original statement should be a true statement. And plug in any other number and see that the original statement is false. All right, All right so that's what I'll enter this interval here. All right, so back here, got parentheses, you know, negative 2, comma, negative 1, parentheses again. And submit. Wonderful. All right. Continuing on again, please read the answer explanations. The next question is on that same objective, right? Solving an absolute value inequality involving less than. And it's a pretty nice one. Uh, it's already set up the way I want. Right? Again, I'm going to write it out on paper and do it there. All right, so once again, I have the instructions, the steps I'm going to follow when it's a less than. So first step, easy. That's already done. We have the absolute value alone is less than or equal to. And then on the other side, the right side is a non-negative number, right? one. Again, if it were a negative number on the other side, then there'd be no solution All right, with these less than cases. All right, um, so now I write the equivalent complex or compound inequality. The only way this is happening is if 2x minus 3 were less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, you know, greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to negative, a positive 1 at the same time, right? If, if 2x minus 3 were between negative 1 and positive 1, including negative 1 or positive 1. So again, that's just the u is 2x minus 3, the a is 1. Uh, then I would get the variable alone in the middle to find our solutions, right? First I would add 3 to all three parts, right, 2 there, less than or equal to 2x, less than or equal to 4, and then divide everything by positive 2, so the inequalities, you know, the direction stays the same. We'd have 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. Here's a description of all the solutions to this inequality. You could replace x with any number between 1 and 2, including 1 or 2, and the original statement should be true. And I leave it to you to test that, right? Plug in 1 for x, 2 for x, 1 and a half, 1.7, you know, something between 1 and 2, and the original statement should be a true statement. And if I'm making a graph, you know, 1 is to the left of 2. Our solutions, the picture of our solutions are the numbers between 1 and 2 including, right, you have less than, you know, the or equal to, or equal to on both ends. So 1 is a solution, 2 is a solution, so I'm putting filled in points above those, or, or brackets, if you want. And then interval notation, right, this is going from 1 to 2 from left to right, right, this piece of solutions here, and then 1 gets a bracket, 2 gets a bracket, because, you know, they are solutions, and here's what they're asking us to enter, right, the interval notation for the solution set. And that's what I will enter. Right, back here, got the bracket, 
left bracket, one comma two, right bracket. And then submit. And hooray, hooray. Okay, wonderful. All right. It looks like we got one, f another one, one final one where the, looks like I only need to do one more here, I got three quarters of the way. Another one where solving an absolute value inequality involving less than. So again, I'm going to write it out and bring it to you on some paper. All right, so it's another, you know, absolute value less than scenario. So I got the same instructions up as the past couple of examples. So first, I get the absolute value alone on the left is less than, right, and then some number that's not negative, hopefully, on the right, which I have here, it's 1. Now, this number isn't always going to be 1, right? All the examples so far in this video have had 1 on this side with the less than examples. That's not always going to happen. Please understand this. Now, one more time. If this number is negative, then there'd be no solution, right? The absolute value of something can't be less than a negative number. So there'd be no solution. But this is positive one, right? Again, if it were negative one, negative two, there'd be no solution. You just write that. Um, but it's a positive number, right? Something that's not negative, so I can continue on. Uh, then we can write the equivalent inequality, right? Compound inequality. Uh, the only way the absolute value of 4x minus 3 is going to be less than 1 is if 4x minus 3 is between negative 1 and positive 1. Right? Again, I'm just treating the 4x minus 3 as u and the 1 as a. Right? And then I solve this compound inequality by getting the variable alone in the middle. First I'd add 3 to all three parts. 2 is less than 4x is less than 4. Then I would divide all three parts by positive 4, and that's a positive number I'm dividing by, so the inequality direction will not change. Now, 2 divided by 4 is a half, and is less than x, is less than, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. So here is a description right, of all the solutions to this inequality. I could replace x with any number between 1 half and 1. And test it out, you know, replace x with point, point 0.6, point 0.7, point 0.75, point 0.8, point 0.9, you know, point 0.99. Replace x with any number between, you know, point 0.5 and 1, and this original statement will be true. Now, 1 half and 1 are not solutions themselves, right? If you replaced x with a half or x with 1, this would be false. And any other number, you know, would make it false. Just, just the numbers between 1 half and 1. And then if we were graphing, you know, one half is to the left of one on the number line. All the numbers that would be solutions of this inequality are the numbers in between one half and one, so I'll mark those off. And one half is not a solution, so an open point above one half. You know, one is not a solution, same thing, or parentheses. And then the interval notation for this picture, and going always left to right, this is going from 1 half to 1, so I have 1 half comma 1, parentheses on the 1 half because it's not a solution, parentheses on the 1 because it's not a solution of the inequality, and there you go. Right. That's what they want me to enter, right, interval notation. So once again, back here, parentheses, you know, 1 half, comma, 1, parentheses again, and that's what they want. Alright, All right. so that objective with the less than is completed. Now I just need to do several more questions with the greater than. Alright, so, so this one. You write it out and bring it back to you on paper. All right, so now I have the, uh, the instructions I wrote up earlier for solving the greater than inequalities. So first step I want, you know, get the absolute value alone on the left, which it already is, is greater than, and then I'm hoping for a non-negative number on the right side, but oh wait, that's not happening here. The right side as a negative number. 
and remember. You know, we saw, I think, the first example in this video. First question. When the absolute value of something, you know, when is that greater than a negative? Always. This is always happening. This is always true. No matter what you plug in for the variable. Because right, the left side will be not negative and the right side's negative and something that's not negative is always greater than something that's negative. All right. So that implies that you know, all real numbers are solutions. All right, I'll just say all real, uh, all real numbers are solutions. Let me write that out in full. Okay, um, so then the graph, right, if you were graphing this, I mean, to indicate that all real numbers are solutions, you're just, you know, just marking off every single number, the entire number line is, is a solution. You, you can test it out. Plug in anything you want for x, anything you want at all, 0, 1, a half, a million, pi, square root of 3, negative 5, and this will be a true statement because the left side will never be negative. And, and something that's not negative is always greater than something that's negative. I've said that before. Then the interval for all real numbers, right? This picture of solutions here, you know, from left to right, we're going from, you know, negative infinity, comma, to positive infinity, and then parentheses on both of those. And this, this is what we're asked to enter, right? The interval notation for the solutions. All right, so that's what I'll do here. So negative and then the infinity symbol, comma, to positive infinity, close parentheses, and there you go. That's all real numbers. Every single number will be a solution to that inequality. Okay. All right, let's hope we get some more interesting ones. You know, so far with the greater thans, there's been a negative number on the, uh, on the right side. You know, that, that's not very interesting. The, every number would be a solution. This one's going to be the same. Oh, actually, no, there was an example with the greater thans. The absolute value of x is greater than 6. That didn't end up like that. Okay, so at least we've seen one where it was a little more interesting. So here's another one where, again, you're going to end up with a negative number on the other side, and I'll show you. All right, so again, I have the uh, absolute value on one side and greater than some, you know, I, I want to isolate it first, though. All right, this isn't in the form I want. Um, so this absolute value of x, right, I want to get that alone. So I don't want the plus 6. I don't want the times 5. And nothing but the absolute value. Okay, so first I will subtract 6 from both sides. That gives me 5 times the absolute value of x on the left is greater than or equal to, and then 1 minus 6 is, you know, negative 5 on the right. And then I would divide by 5, right, you know, I want the absolute value alone. Divide by 5, get rid of that 5 there. And that's a positive 5, so the inequality doesn't change, right, so the, the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to, and then negative 5 divided by positive 5 is negative 1. And now I have what I want. I have the absolute value alone is greater than or equal to some number, but the only way I'm going to go through these steps right, is if the number on the other side is not negative. And yet again, the number on the right side here is negative. All right, and so this has all real numbers of solutions again, because right. uh, you know, the absolute value of a number is always not negative, and something that's not negative will always be greater than something that's negative. So just as before, in a couple of examples you've seen throughout this video, all real numbers are solutions. You could replace x with anything you wanted and the first, the original statement would be true. So all real numbers are solutions. If you were to graph, right, the graph would be silly because it's just the entire real number line, right? Everything, mark off everything, right? Everything works. 
and the interval notation, which is what they're asking us for, and you saw this in previous examples. This is from negative infinity to positive infinity, right, with parentheses on the infinities, and you know, this is what they want us to enter. All right, so don't forget, if the number on the other side is not negative, then you're writing this equivalent compound inequality with the word or, you're solving these and you know, stating the solutions from there. And you saw me do one like that, but just know that there could be others, right? Please understand that the problems I'm doing in this video are not exactly the problems you're going to be doing, but the procedures are the same, the way you would go about them are the same, and I've written that out here for you. All right, so let's go and enter this right, one more time, negative infinity to infinity. And that should be it for my assignment here. Right, again, please read through the answer explanations and all that. And that's it. Assignment complete. All right. I've said this several times now. Please know that you know, the questions I saw in this assignment aren't exactly, you know, for the most part, aren't going to be exactly the same questions you'll see when you do Section 2.7, Part 2 assignment. Uh, but the you know the uh, the procedures are the same. Those steps I wrote out will be the same. The objectives are the same, right? So the kinds of questions you'll see are similar to ones I've shown you, and the way you go about working on them, the way you should go about thinking about them, is the way I've done here. And hopefully, watching me go through this and other videos I've put out um, help you when working on this assignment. All right, and thank you very much for watching.